This week on the show, we have Caleb Pinkett, the executive producer of the hit TV show, Cobra High. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about understanding the importance of focusing your energy on all the things that can go right, rather than what can go wrong. So often, we base our goals and desires on the assumption that things won't work out for us or that it will be too difficult to attain. Successful people put their energy into focusing on the end result and all the things that can go right, envisioning how they will feel when their goal is complete. They dwell in possibility of everything unfolding the way they imagined, and even in the event that it doesn't, they are open to adapting and still expect a positive outcome. Make it your mission today to focus your energy on what you want, not on what you don't want to manifest, and watch your life unfold in your favor. As Buddha quotes, what you think you become, what you feel you attract, what you imagine you create. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. So Will Smith is your brother-in-law and I, I heard mm -hmm. that he put you through the ringer when you wanted to get to Hollywood. <laughs> I watched a really funny interview where he told you you have to get a six pack and that mm -hmm. you had to read a bunch of books, but he did that oh, to yeah. prepare you for the industry. Cause as I said, it's so difficult, right? So let's mm -hmm. talk about that and how Will Smith kind of was your mentor and really <laughs> prepared you for the industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Without question. And he still is my, my, my mentor. And what it, what it was, he felt that he's like in this business, it's so taxing on you mentally and emotionally. Right. And he said, I need to know you have the mental fortitude mm -hmm. to be able to handle everything that's about to be thrown at you. Right. And he said, the best way to test that is through physicality. Right. And at the time he would tease me, he said I was skinny with a gut. And he was like, so until you get a six pack, we're not, <laughs> we're not doing anything. And I was like, what's the point of the six pack? And he said, cause I need to know that you can train your mind to reject the things that your body is craving. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have American actor and producer, Caleb Pinkett. Caleb is also one of the executive producers of the hit Netflix TV show, Cobra Kai. Caleb, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I cannot complain. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you so much for making it happen. I'm really, really excited to speak with you. You have so many amazing accolades, but before we get into that, let's talk about your passion for storytelling and why you wanted to get into the entertainment industry. Well, um, I just grew up loving movies, like as a kid, and I, I thought they were real, you know, as a child, I thought the actors were really those people and all of that. So I was just enamored with the, the, the medium and then my sister started um, acting at a very young age, so I started getting exposed to it and seeing it. And then just my, I just been a lover of story. Like my mom is a devout Christian, so she raised me in the church. So, you know, the Bible, all of those things are stories, right? So I just really consumed story at a young age and mixed in with, with movies and then my love for history. And mm. because of that, history is storytelling. Like it's perfect storytelling. It's what a, it's a beginning, middle and end. It's a character who wants something and all the obstacles that it takes for the character to get it and they either do or they don't. And it's just, it's it's something that has been near and dear to my heart for, for years, well, since I was a child. And so I never thought about it, that I would be able to make it into a career. And um, I, was, I was able to, you know, bless through, through my family, them being into the business and, it, you know, making it easier to get in and then just uh, all the things that I've been able to do because of story. It's it's like, it's the greatest thing on, on earth. It's like, I don't work. I I do what I love. And you know, it's one of the things my father told me, he said, hell is getting up to a job that you hate. Heaven is waking up to a job you love. And I'm blessed to be able to do that. That's amazing. I can completely relate to you on that because I'm a journalist. I love storytelling. I've been like that since I was a kid and I love what I do, even though it's a very difficult industry. Uh, it's time consuming. It's a lot, right? And you really have to hustle. 
but it's, it's so good. It's such a great industry and I have a passion for storytelling as well, so I can completely relate to that. So Will Smith is your brother-in-law and I, I heard <laughs> that he put you through the ringer when you wanted to get into Hollywood. <laughs> I watched a really funny interview where he told you you have to get a six pack and that mm -hmm. you had to read a bunch of books, but he did that oh, to yeah. prepare you for the industry because as I said, it's so difficult, right? So let's mm -hmm. talk about that and how Will Smith kind of was your mentor and really prepared <laughs> you for the industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, without question. And he still is my my, my mentor. And what it, what it was, he felt that he's like in this business it's so taxing on you mentally and emotionally right and he said i need to know you have the mental fortitude mm. to be able to handle everything that's about to be thrown at you right and he said the best way to test that is through physicality right and at the time he would tease me he said i was skinny with a gut and he was like so until you get a six pack <laughs> we're not we're not doing anything. And I was like, what's the point of the six pack? And he said, because I need to know that you can train your mind to reject the things that your body is craving um, in oh, wow. order to achieve a goal that you want. Because yeah. I love pizza and French fries and ice cream and all that. And a lot <laughs> of that was put, I couldn't eat it for a while because I was in this training. And he was like, that is going to let me know how much mental fortitude you have and you have the ability to shut down things that your body is craving in order to accomplish the goal and so that was his his reasoning behind it and you know i love him for it because it, it definitely um worked and it helped a lot oh yeah you definitely have to have mental fortitude in this industry right and to be <laughs> successful in anything really but especially in this industry because everybody wants to do it and there's so limited spots right so you really mm -hmm. have to hustle and i like that he did that that's actually a very interesting way of doing things is kind of seeing if you can really train your mind to accomplish your goal and when he saw that he was like okay you're ready <laughs> that, yeah that's absolutely <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i want to talk about one of your big breaks uh, with Overbrook <laughs> Entertainment. It's one of the leading <laughs> entertainment companies in Hollywood. Um, and I like that, you know, you started from the bottom and worked your way up. Uh, so let's talk about that. And what did that, I know you started with delivery. Um, so let's <laughs> talk about, you know, from, starting from the bottom and what it taught you, because you know what, all of us start from the bottom, right? We all have to yeah. work our way up, whether, mm -hmm. whether it's a big actor or whether it's, you know, the president, you have to start small first, right? That's, so let's talk about that. What did starting small, kind of teach you um, along your journey? And what did you learn about yourself? Well, I mean that nothing was just gonna be given to me. Yeah. Like I had to earn it, I had to earn it. And putting me, making me drive um, everybody else around, drive luggage, pick, pick people up and, um, you know, back and forth from the airport, picking up food and lunch and taking people places. And, you know, me being a family member, what that did was it, it showed like, we're not just giving him anything yeah. just because he's, <laughs> he's related. Like people that like, you tell him what to do. You throw, you give him your bag. He's going to take your stuff. You know what I mean? And yeah. so what it did was that it, it really, it, 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 it was humbling, but not in a negative way. It was like really, really good because you just got, I got to see like the flow of the company and how at the time when Overbrook was, was doing its thing, the, 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 everybody in there, everybody's role, how everything flowed. And it was so, it was good to be, to start at the lowest position at the company and then slowly start wake, uh, working, working my way up. Mm -hmm. I think that's an important lesson for anyone watching is that it doesn't matter who you are. You have to start small um, oh, and yeah. work your way up. Nothing is given to you, right? Like you have to. And that's really where you learn about yourself uh, when you kind of go through starting small and you grow, right? So Ab like absolutely. Fun. And for me, it was great because I was like probably the most fit driver <laughs> with a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't no luggage I couldn't carry. You know what I mean? So it worked out. Very nice. And I want to talk about Cobra Kai. You're one of the executive mm -hmm. producers, which is, I love the show, by the way. It's an amazing Thank show. You. Yeah. So why did you guys want to bring it back to life? And let's also talk about the transition from YouTube to Netflix. Okay. So what it really was, um, John, Josh, and Hayden, they are the executive producers and showrunners. Fantastic guys. They brought the idea to, to me. 
because at the time Overbrook controlled like like controlled the rights to the Karate Kid franchise, right? And even though they didn't want to do the Karate Kid, those characters are in the world, right? They're in the the universe. So they had to come to Overbrook, you know, to see if we were okay with it. And as soon as I heard the pitch, I was like, this is brilliant. Yeah. Like, wow, we're gonna follow Johnny's story. Like, oh shit. Oh, I'm sorry. I was like, oh, this is this is this is this is amazing. And I was like, so I needed to get it first. I had to get Sony on board because they were like, really? Like, mm, I don't know, <laughs> right? And then and then there were uh, Glenn Adelman, who's still over there at Sony. Shout out to Glenn. He was like, you know what, Caleb? I'm not too sure about this, but you're my guy. I got you. Let's go take it out. Let's see what happens. You know, we'll just shoot for the fences. We'll see what happens. And YouTube Red was the first. So we went to them first and they they wanted it immediately. Like wow. offered us straight to series. They like, that's rare. Like to get a straight to series offer in the room, 10 episodes off the bat. I was like, oh yes. And it was funny, Netflix was, uh, we pitched Netflix as well after YouTube, right? Cause we were like, well, let's just test the waters. Like we got a big bite on the first mm -hmm. one. Like, yeah. let's see. And Netflix, <laughs> they liked it, but they were like, let's do a pilot and then we'll see. Cause we're not too sure. And plus they're Netflix, you're the king of everything. Yeah. You know, we'll see. And I told, and I, I told the guys, I said, look, um, I don't know about you, but you can wait for the prettiest girl at the party to see if she want to talk to you. Or you could take this girl who's really cool, who's saying, hey, let's go kick it right now. And they were like, we, we're with you. We want to go. I said, we, they were like, we want to kick it right now. I said, cool. So we went to YouTube Red and that's where that's, that's where it started. And then what happened was uh, Google wanted to stop uh, scripted content on, you know, through, through YouTube Red because Google owned it. And they were like, well, you know, we got Google Maps. Like, we don't need no shows. So... They, 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 they cut it, they cut everything that they had. Oh, wow. And we were like, oh no. So now we were we were in limbo and it was between Amazon and Netflix. And Netflix was like, you know what? Um, we'll take that. And there wow. in the rest is history. We, we've been there for three seasons now. And I mean, it's a top rated show on Netflix. Every time it drops, it stays number one for weeks. And it's this show, I swear, I get so much that people know that I like, it like that is that is me like that's my show they're like dude this show <laughs> like it's the only show me and my kids watch um, yeah. i can watch my mom this is like we all love it it's so amazing i got real martial artists that come to me and are like listen i love that show like hey bro if i could get on please give me an audition i'll come in and this and it's it's just it's it's amazing and i just i'm so i'm so proud of because nobody thought it was going to be what it became. None of us even did. We knew I knew people would like it, but I didn't know to this. Like, it's like a phenomenon. Like, it really is. I wear my Cobra Kai jacket, and people are like, bro, do you work on the show? And I'm like, no, I'm the executive producer. What are you? What? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, so listen. So last season, when this happened, you know, they start going yeah, into yeah. stuff. And I just, I just sit back, and I, I, I love it. Like, to create and be a part of a project that impact so many people mm -hmm. with the thing that you want to do as a as a storyteller and that's infect your audience with story make them feel and emote from your creation right and like to be a part of that and john josh and hayden i can't say it enough about them they are phenomenal writers and and karate kid gurus like they know everything every character, everything in the whole universe. And they they bring it all to fruition in our show. And I couldn't be more happier to be a part of it. Yeah, and how does it feel to see, let's talk about fruition, how does it feel to see like the fruits of your labor kind of manifest into what it is right now? Because as you said, it's a hit show. I'm sure there was a ton of hard work that went into creating this show. Like such, there's so much going on in the show. So, and I think we're on the, what, fifth season? We're coming up to the fifth season? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. yeah. So what does it take to take a story and really make it into a series or a movie? It takes, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a lot. So what, what we call it is we have to break the story, right? And that means like, especially with a television sh show, you have to break every character's line. So your character, each character has their own arc, as we call it, for the season. And then you have to combine, you have to create the tent poles or the, the the beats of their arc that will intersect and connect through every single episode wow. and then make it culminate in a final idea. So for the most part with us, we usually end in a tournament 
or something to that to that nature and so you build everything to to have the mu- the maximum emotion in the tournament you want you want you know like like in the original karate kid you saw the times they bullied daniel right you saw the fights you saw daniel get back with the water in the sh- in the in the in the bathroom and all that kind of stuff you know how angry they were yeah. so when you go to the tournament it's on like it's 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 prime it's it's amp and that's what we we do with the show so it is it it takes months for the writers to do that because they have to break it and then you have to write it you have to write the episodes right so it 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 takes it takes months to get a season up and up and going you know what i mean like like the writers are are getting ready to start on cobra kai next month because we start shooting in september mm-hmm. so it's 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 all of that work and hard work and the guys john josh and hayden are doing the hev- the heavy lifting for season six right now mm-hmm. right and then they'll get into the writer's room and break it with all the writers because they can't do it all by themselves it's just a, it's so so much work so it's um it's an absolute team effort but it's 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 wonderful i mean come on yeah. you get to tell stories for a living how yeah. great is that <laughs> you know what i mean right. some people yeah. actually have to work hard like pick up <laughs> boxes and dig That's ditches true. and you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, like, yeah we get to say hey wouldn't it be cool if yeah <laughs> you know so yeah yeah, we actually had Hannah Kelper. She was uh, one of the actors on Cobra Kai. We had her last mm-hmm. year on the show. So yeah, no, it's, yeah. A, it's a fantastic show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk about your success. I mean, you've been really successful in this industry and you did it on your own merit. So if you can name three things that have made you successful, three traits that you say you possess, what would you say they are? Passion, discipline, naivete. Oh. Because yes, and what I mean by the naivete is this. If you if you just think you can do it and you don't know why, you're more you're more than likely going to do it. Like Will Will has this quote where he would always tell me. He says the man who says he can and the man he says he can't are both usually right. Yeah. Right? And it's like like so you want to stay naive in the sense where somebody say, no, you can't do that. They would have said, no, you can't sell Cobra Kai. That sounds corny. Nobody's going to want to see that. That's terrible. And who are you? You're just, you're just starting. Your boss isn't doing it. Will's not doing it. Like, no, stop. Okay. If you listen to all that, you're like, dang, they're right. I am young. I am new. Yeah, that you're right. It is kind of nerdy. It's not, it is, it is a little lame. <sighs> So now you won't do it, right? But if you're like, I don't care what you say, I think it's gonna work and I'm gonna do it. And yeah. like just taking taking the leap. That's what you that's what you have to do. It's like you have to believe in yourself no matter what. Even and people are gonna tell you you're not smart enough, you're not, you're not good enough, you don't have enough experience, uh, you talk funny, you look different, the way you dress isn't um, industry standard, whatever, you cuss too much, whatever, whatever is something people are always going to tell you what you cannot do. And you have to have the naivete and to believe, why not? Yeah, I can. Why mm-hmm. not? You know what I mean? People, yeah. people, it's so, it's so crazy. Well, um, one of my favorite rappers back in the day, his name is Nelly. And Nelly tells the story that everybody in the industry passed on his first album twice. Mm. And that album, when it came out, sold over 10 million records. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know what I yeah. mean? Like, like nobody knows it. Nobody knows. And you have to go with your heart and your gut. If you believe in something, you just got to push it. And it takes a little naivete to do that because you just like, for some reason, I believe it, I can do it. So yeah that's, yeah, that's that's what I would say. I completely 100% agree with that because you know what's funny when I got into this industry and I said I wanted to do all the things I would do and I would interview the people I do um, a lot of people said I was naive including my teachers because I went to school for news so they're like you're naive you know this industry is really hard and I kept proving them wrong they said I wouldn't get a news job I got a job at NBC in in the States everything I people told me I couldn't do I did and I don't have any limits on what I can accomplish I feel like if you tell me I could do anything, I'm like, okay. Cause, and in a way, it's because maybe it's naivety, but at the end of the day, it's better to be naive and, <laughs> and just keep going than overthink it, right? And be like, oh, I can't do this and put limits or constraints on your beliefs, right? That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, my show is all about inspiration. I created this platform to inspire, to uplift, and to showcase that anything is possible. So. 
Cala, for one of our viewers watching that maybe isn't seeing their dreams uh, come to fruition, maybe they're putting in the work, but they're just not seeing the results, and maybe they feel unmotivated or going through a hard time, what would you say to encourage and uplift them? Wow. I would say really decide, go deep into yourself and really make sure that what you're pursuing is what you love. Because mm -hmm. if you love it, you're not gonna quit. You'll 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 endure. That's why you have to love what you do because this job is not easy. Making telling stories, making movies, television shows, it take it's like a minor miracle to get a movie made, <laughs> right? It's yeah. like like you'll you'll come up, you'll have ten projects and only one will sell. And selling and getting it made, which is what we call green light, are two completely different things. You may not, it may not ever get made, right? So it's 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 like you have to love it because the love is what will keep you going through through the hard times. And if you want to quit at something, the desire to quit is normal. But actually doing that is is a is a tragedy. So I would say make sure you love it because if you do, I I strongly doubt that you're gonna give up. And eventually something is gonna open up for you. Cause like like with me, I started I started in acting because I thought I wanted to be an actor and like, ooh, yeah, that'd be cool. But <laughs> No, story yeah. was like making the story and, and, and putting stuff together and selling it and doing that was way more of my passion than standing in front of a camera, right? So I found my lane. So um, I would say somebody has to figure out what they love and then go towards it because what will happen is your destiny will find you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As long as you're going in the, of, um, in the direction that you're supposed to, it You'll, you'll, you'll do it. There's a book Will gave me to read called The Element. And the idea of the element is that you're in your element when you find what you're good at, what you love, and what people will pay you to do, right? Mm -hmm. So like, so like um, Drake, since you guys are in Toronto, Drake's element is music, right? He's great at it, he loves it, and people pay him a lot of money to do it. That's mm -hmm. the element. You know what I yeah. mean? LeBron's element is basketball. He's great at it. He loves it and he gets paid to do it. That's what you want to be able to do. So that's what I would encourage somebody. Just make sure you love it and and just keep going and stay naive. Stay naive. <laughs> just keep believing you can do it even though everybody says you can't. <laughs> that's so true, right? Passion is, I would say, one of the most important things because when you're passionate, It'll you, you won't take a no personal. You're just gonna keep going when you're That's passionate. Right. You're it doesn't matter what the obstacles are. You're just gonna have that end goal in mind and know how you're gonna feel at the end of the road once you're finished, right? So it's passion, Absolutely. and I, I think that's so true. Caleb, thank you so much for being on the show today. Like you're very inspirational. You should be a motivational speaker. You should add that to your list. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel inspired and pumped. Um, it was so good talking to you. Congratulations on all your success and. Thank yeah, you. we hope to have you back soon when you're in Toronto. <laughs> All right. Love to. Thank you so much. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. Hey, you can fly higher than the sky.